Hey guys, welcome to an advanced video about overclocking for the AMD Radeon RX 480. So um, I tried overclocking on the card with uh, stock driver and stock uh, cooler before. It was not that impressive, so I decided to give this card another try and to see how far you can push the card if you don't have any limitations. So first of all, which limitations do you have? So usually on the card you have three major limitations you have to think of. First off, the, um, the thermal limitations. So the stock cooler is not that great, so we replaced that one with a GPU-only water cooler. Um, so that problem should be solved. The second problem is the voltage. Uh, currently, uh, I could only set 1.15 volt in the driver, which is not really that much. So um, we found a different solution, how to tweak the voltage a little bit higher. I will explain in a little bit how we did it. Um, obviously, normally you can do it with uh, several uh, software like Strix or um, uh, GPU Tweak, MSI Afterburner, this kind of software. And uh, the third thing you have to think of is power limitations or protections. So that could be either um, OVP, like over voltage protection, over current protection, or uh, just a power limit in general. So we had to think of all these kind of things. And of course, you will probably think of limitations of the current or wattage itself, which you might have um, resulting of the PCI Express slot and the six pin PCI Express connector. So first of all, let's talk about the six pin PCI Express connector. Um, I have to make clear that this thing is not limiting anything. Um, even if you would switch to an eight pin uh, PCI Express connector, it would not change a thing because the six pin and the eight pin both have three um, cables for plus 12 volt and ground. Um, the 8-pin just has additional two grounds, um, which will lower the resistance um, of the ground to the card, which is a little bit uh, better for the voltage regulators, but it's not really changing anything, anything for overclocking, because even with the 6-pin, you can easily get like 250 watt just out of the 6-pin connector. Another thing you might think of is the PCI Express slot itself. So you probably saw all the things um, lately about um, mainboards dying because of the high power draw. Uh, actually, this should not be an issue because usually uh, you have to think of that you have several cards in one mainboard, like for example, three GPUs in one mainboard, which draw power from three slots. And if each card can draw, let's say 50 watt, then it's also 150 watt um, total, which is being drawn over the PCI Express slots. So that's not really a problem. Um, I also tested this on my card. I will explain later how much power we drew, uh, drew from the PCI Express slot. So I can ensure you this is not a problem. Only if you have a very, very cheap and crappy motherboard, it might be a problem. But for any high quality mainboard, it will not cause any problems. So how did we overclock it? So first of all, um, last Friday, my friend Elmore, um, he's also an extreme overclocker. He's um, actually from Sweden, now working in Taiwan for ASUS um, and working as mainboard R&D engineer. So he has an enormous knowledge about everything which is hardware related and he also created a small tool which is called Elmore EVC. So it's um, actually uh, just a small PCB with a microcontroller on it and it supports um, I2C which is um, just a data um, connection bus system. So you can um, for example communicate with this small microcontroller um, and the graphics card so you can do voltage settings, power limitations and all that kind of stuff. Well, you have to solder this thing to the graphics card, which is one thing you might probably not want to do. But for us, Extreme Overclockers is a very handy tool. I will explain you in a little bit how exactly this works. So let's do let's go step by step what we did and how exactly we did it, how we did it. So first of all, we tried um, to increase the voltage. Um, we left the stock cooler on the card and we, uh, we tried to increase the voltage using the Elmore EVC software. So this is how um, we attached the EVC to the card. You can see the picture here. This is showing the backside um, of the RX 480. You can see three cables attached. So one cable, the black one is the ground, and then you have the red and the yellow um, cables, which are SDA and SCL which are um, clock and data connections of the I2C bus. So only with these three cables, we can, uh, we can communicate, uh, communicate with a GPU voltage controller, which you can see here. It's the um, International Rectifier Controller. Uh, it's a 3567B um, controller, which is very common, also a very strong controller. 
which can control six faces and the card has six faces. So three of the faces uh, draw the power out of the PCI Express slot and three faces draw the power from the six pin connector. That's why you actually have this kind of high power draw from the PCI Express slot. AMD might fix this soon. The way they fix this will probably be that they just change the load distribution a little bit higher from the six pin. So um, yeah, not really sure if this is fixing anything in reality, but yeah, might just shut some media up. All right, so I showed you the picture how it looks, how we attached um, the EVC. Also here is a small um, video I did for you guys, so you can see um, how it looked exactly in the system. All right, so after um, we figured out that we can change the voltage with the, with the Elmore EVC, and this is um, how the Elmore EVC looks, the EVC control panel. So on the left, you can see we added the AMD RX480, and you can see on the left side that we changed the GPU voltage from 1.15, which is the maximum you can set in the driver, to 1.35 volt. And you can see on the right side, there is a monitoring area, and you can see the, the real voltage is around around 1.33 volt. Uh, it's not exactly 1.35, which is kind of also related to the load line calibration, which is a little bit screwed, and I will explain later why. Also on the bottom, you can see the GPU VRM temperature. So with this tool, you can manage, um, you can uh, read out the GPU VRM temperature, and in the middle, you can see the GPU output current, which is in this case um, 50 amps. And um, yeah, this is not really correct, but I will explain in a little bit why. So again, let's take a, a picture, a look at a picture of the card. So um, like I said before, we wanted to get rid of any, any thermal limitations. So we removed the stock cooler and replaced it with the Rashin Tech a GPU only water cooler. Uh, this one actually works very well for this card. You can see on the left side, we left um, the VRMs on stock. We did not put any cooler on the VRM. Um, actually, it's not really needed. I'm not sure if you know uh, the YouTube channel of um, Bulzoid. Um, I will link to his video here. He did a circuit analysis of the PCB, which is really nice. Uh, you can get a lot of uh, very useful information out of this video. And he also explained that the six phases can carry four amps each and uh, the four amps are at plus 125 degrees Celsius. So uh, yeah, we checked um, with the Elmo EVC, the temperature on load on the VRMs, and it usually hit maximum of like 105 degrees. So at around 105 degrees, we can still usually draw like 45 amps per phase um, out of the card. So that's more than enough and should not limit anything. All right, so after um, we figured out how to change the voltage, um, we noticed that the power limitation is still there. Um, we could only add plus 50% in the um, uh, in the AMD driver, which was not enough. So the card pulled more than 170, 180 watts, even with the water cooler, uh, just by adding 1.25 volt. So we had to find a, a solution how to remove the power target. Usually. You do that by just modifying the BIOS, but at this point we did not have a special BIOS or anything to modify the BIOS. So first we thought of doing a hardware solution, a normal hardware mod. But on this card it's not that simple to modify the power target because um, the GPU voltage controller is um, sensing um, the power draw from each phase. So on each phase you would have to modify um, the, power, um, the power sensing which is not, not really good because it might screw up the load line calibration as well. So what we did is uh, modifying how the GPU controller itself is reading uh, the power draw. So we figured out that there is um, like a, a special divider inside the GPU controller, which is uh, related to the, um, to the sensing of the power draw. And usually the value is set to four and we just changed the value to two. So um, in reality, the GPU voltage controller could only sense 50% of the power draw. So before the power, uh, the card was drawing, let's say 180 watt on load and uh, it, it uh, clocked down and afterwards it would only um, uh, draw or would measure only 90 watts. So it's 50% and it would not limit anything. I did a quick video for you so you can see exactly what we did and how it looks like. So in this video, you can see the card is running at 1430 megahertz. This is just running a GPU-C rendering tab just to give it some load to stay in 3D mode. 
you can see the card is running at 75 degrees Celsius so it was still on air at that point and you can also see that it's on the bottom it's drawing 145 amps 150 amps something like this and the voltage is 1.26 so now we moved to the EBC software and we changed um, the divider by 2 and uh, hit apply and now you can also see um, on the right side in the sensing and the monitoring area you can see 8 phase output current um, is uh, 60 amps and now he applied and it now it changed to 30 amps so it's only sensing 50 percent and we're good and it will not clock down after this uh, modification so this way we actually removed all kind of um, limitations on the card and we could uh, start with a proper overclocking so what we did is increasing the voltage in uh, small steps to see how much the GPU scales. So we started from 1.25 volt and we went up to 1.5 volt on load just to see how the card scales, if it scales with voltage or not. And we figured out that it scaled um, up to 1.35 volt and above it, it got worse because actually the GPU was getting too hot internally. So 1.35 volt was the sweet spot at water cooling. And usually the, even on water cooling, the card got really hot around 60, like five, 50 to 60 degrees. Um, so let's take a look at the results, which we did. So the maximum we could run was 1,500 megahertz on the GPU for Firestrike, uh, which is actually not really bad. You can see the score is uh, 12,800 points um, done on the uh, Core i7 6,700K. You can also see that the memory is overclocked to 2250 megahertz. Afterwards, we clocked down to 1480 megahertz just because this was running totally stable. We could run it forever. And you can see now the final score, the highest we could achieve is uh, 13,555. I have to say that in this score, we also di uh, disabled uh, um, tessellation in the AMD driver, which gives you a, quite a big boost in the um, score. So this might not be directly comparable um, to any other result out there. We just did it for the HWBot database. If you want to compare the performance, you should um, take a look at the result before with 12,800. I think that's more realistic. Um, so this score is around uh, the GDX 980 area. So actually quite good and impressive. But you have to keep in mind that those settings are not suitable for 24-7 usage. Um, we also did a Firestrike Extreme score and the score was uh, 6,800 points. We also did this one at 1480 megahertz on the GPU and also uh, memory at 2250 megahertz. Another thing I would like to show you is this screenshot we did. Um, it's showing um, 1,700 megahertz on the GPU. Um, we set this one with a GPU tweak. Um, I just want to show you this because this is not true. This is this might fool you. Um, the thing is you can set anything in 2D and uh, with a high voltage. So we set 1.3 volt and we set the GPU to 1700 megahertz. The card is actually not clocking that high. So it's uh, staying at three th 300 megahertz in the background. And if you would um, apply any kind of load like 3D load, it would crash immediately. I'm, I just want to show you this because I saw a lot of comments out there saying, yeah, but the custom cards will come up with 1600 megahertz because I saw screenshots. Don't let you let um, let them fool you because you can set anything for a screenshot, but you cannot set it stable um, for 3D. So, what kind of information can we get from this? So the thing is, um, 1480 megahertz at water cooling with no limitations on the power target, no limitations on the VRM, no voltage limitations. Um, Show, just shows that you will not get a lot more with custom cards. So if, for example, you want to buy a Asus Strix card. Of course, the card will be better. You will have a stronger uh, VRM and will have um, eight pin connector uh, instead of six pin connector probably. Um, of course, the cooler will be much better than the reference uh, design. Still don't expect too much. I, I would say that 1400 megahertz um, should be doable on the custom cards with proper cooling, proper voltage should be fine. Maybe even 1450 on a good uh, on a good GPU, but don't expect um, 1500 or 1600 on those cards. That's not realistic. It's not going to happen. All right. Um, I hope I helped you a little bit with this video, gave you some more insights of um, what you can do with the RX 480 if you have no limitations whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if so, I would like a thumbs up, maybe a comment in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, just drop it in the comments. I will do my best to help you out. Otherwise, 
Enjoy the rest of your day and see you soon.